In this video, I'll introduce some of the new features of Edit NC Release 10.2. We've added two new functions to the file menu, one called Extract Programs. This scans the current file for programs, subprograms, and macros that are identified by O words and colons and copies them into separate files. It's handy if, for example, you've uploaded multiple programs from a control and need to organize them. Uh, merge Programs, also under the File menu, scans the current file for subprogram and macro calls where the target routines are not in the file, and it helps you locate and then merge them. There's a new function under the Analysis menu to help debug FANUC macros and programs that use variables, and the Backplotter now supports FANUC variables and macros as well as B-axis indexing. Uh, the Backplotter also now offers breakpoints to make locating specific moves easier. Resequencing has been updated to handle programs with go-to commands that use n-words as targets and it will, uh, if the n-word changes as a result of resequencing, it will update the, the go-to commands and commands that reference those, uh, those lines. General analysis now shows machining time by tool. And last but not least, the open and save dialogs have their default folder buttons back. This was in uh, some previous releases, was removed in release 10. We've got it back under XP, and it's implemented under Vista and later versions of Windows using the favorite folders over on the left of the dialog. So let's get started by looking at the new extract programs function. We'll start by reading in a program that was uploaded from a controller. This is 11,000 some odd lines and it consists of quite a few uh, individual subprograms and macros all delineated by O words. And we'll go to extract programs and this will scan the program, list those O words. Turns out there's 504 individual programs and subprograms in here. And now we need to, to look at these options. We're going to be creating 500 some odd files here. So we need to name them something, something reasonable that we can uh, refer to later. These are the O words that were found. We have a number of options available for naming the files. We can name them pretty much what the O word is, O with a number and some extension, which we've specified PGM down here. We can just use the number. We can use a mask. Uh, the pound sign indicates where the, the number would be inserted. And we can uh, search for a comment on the O word line or the following line uh, if, and see if they, they might be useful. In this case, we'll just go with uh, what we have set up here, which is to use O with a number. We can also change any existing uh, subprogram IDs that started with a colon to O, and the new files that we create can be bracketed with a uh, with a percent sign. So we'll apply these options, and we'll see in a second here what the file names are going to look like. We'll accept those, and we'll say let's let's extract the files. Now, these are all going to go into a directory that we specify. So let's let's start a, a new directory or create a new uh, a new folder. We'll rename it name it extracted programs. And the editor tells us that if there are files out there uh, by the same name already, then they'll they'll be overwritten. In this case we don't have any programs out there. So we say go, and we've just written 504 files. We can take a look at them by going out to the new Extracted Programs directory, and they're all listed here. Now let's pick one, and we can use that uh, to look at the Merge Program feature. We'll start with 728. This is one of the one of the programs that was. Uh, just extract it out, and it has a few calls in here. It calls via an M98 subprogram call. It calls one. There's a couple of G65s, another M98 in here. 
So we'll go to merge programs. Our intent here is to find these routines and merge them in with this program. Listed here are those routines that are not found in this program. So we need to go out to our extracted programs or, or whatever folders we have uh, where we store these things and pick them. Go down and find the 8,000, 8,001, uh, and uh, read those in. Okay, 8,000, 1,001, 8,002. If one of these had its own subroutine calls in there, subprogram calls, uh, they would then become they would then be listed here, and we could read those in as well. So those files have been appended. and we now have a complete program. If we go to analysis, we look at the new macros and variables function, we can just quickly process this whole file and we didn't receive any, any error messages indicating there was anything missing. You can see that the variables are listed here. If we go back up to the top and just step through, you can see the variable usage as we as we step through. Or we can go back up to the top and set a breakpoint, set one here, at any number of breakpoints and just process uh, right up to that point. Take a look at the variables as they set and then process singly uh, from there on. And here's what we've done with search for files. Pretty much as it was before, we've added some options to filter by the age of the file. You can search for files that were saved two days or less ago within the past week or within the past month. So if we search for files, oh, for example, with a T5 within it that were filed within the last month, we get one file. If we look for any files with T5, we get to see a few more. And as before, we can uh, pick a file, indicate that we want to thumbnail of it. And apart from that, the dialog is unchanged. We've made some internal changes to uh, speed things up a bit. Now let's look at breakpoints again in the context of the backplotter. Call in a different program, and let's assume we've got some concerns with this program down in down in this area so we'll backplot it and now we'll set some breakpoints you can see as I do this that we get a red circle in the editor itself indicating where the breakpoint has been set you unset them by clicking that circle and you can also see the corresponding element being highlighted over in the back plot. We have a new button called forward to breakpoint which moves us forward to the next breakpoint. Makes it easy to find areas of interest within the program. Let's look at a more complex, shorter program, but more complex. This machines a series of O-ring grooves on various faces of a part, and you can see the b-axis indexing being used here. Down here is a G2 command that's used to actually there's two G2s used to uh, machine the O-ring circles. They use R words to describe the radius, so a single command uh, won't produce a complete circle. The reason that the clicking it, clicking, putting a breakpoint on there uh, highlights all the arcs, all the circles is that those commands are executed multiple times in the course of processing this macro uh, in order to produce them. Now, we'll go back to the prior program, take a look at change we made to the analysis function, analyze it, go to the tool list, and you can see that we now break out machining time by tool. So Tool four, uh, the tool in block 4, tool number 1, 1 1.9 minutes, this one 26.9, this one 40, and so on. 
We have a new button called Copy to Clipboard. That copies this information to the clipboard and you can use that to assist in producing documentation. In this case we'll just put a tool list right in the program. I just pasted it. And then we could take those blocks turn them into comments uh, for some some basic basic documentation. That covers most of the new features of uh, Edit NC Release 10.2. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next release.